We're looking for a two-time champion of the world to go to the top of the USST board with a 1409 or quicker. Miranda Arizonis, this is Sherry Survey. As a little girl, all I cared about was riding my horses. The first time I heard my name called was in Kilner, Wisconsin, at a local Jim Canna. As I got older, my mom and I ran barrels together. Those days riding with my mom has influenced my barrel racing career more than any other person. I was 18 years old and started my first year of college, but my heart wasn't in it. I came home and begged my dad to let me quit school and try just one time to make the NFR. I could try just one year to see what would happen, and I promised him I would go back to school. Whoops. <laughs> I walk Winnie Mae by her mama and we just have a little short visit because I kind of think it's funny and then I'm hoping that Stingray is going to give her some words of wisdom. Yeah, hi. Come see your baby. Let's take this off. Oh, hello. Because really honestly, Money Mae is like, I don't even know who Stingray is and I'm not intimidated by you. Tell her what it's like to be a good horse, Stingray. Hmm. Be nice. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> those good girls. Huh. It really kind of is crazy, I'm gonna say this, and she's gonna do it, but if she was any other horse, Money May like gets aggressive to other horses and she, it's like she knows. Huh. They're both pretty, pretty sweet horses and like Stingray just wants a cookie and be petted on and is sweet to other horses and sometimes Money May she can kind of be sassy towards other horses. She loves people. And as long as you're petting on her and paying attention to her, she will just stand here all day, which is very similar to her mother. But it seems like, uh, and I do know that because she's only four, doesn't help, but our attention span and staying focused on things sometimes. And it shows sometimes when I'm uh, riding her and, and working her, she, She's a bird or she squirrels on me sometimes, but we'll get over that. I had asthma when I was a kid. I lived back in Wisconsin, so my parents had heard that maybe the Arizona climate would be good for it or maybe cure it. So my mother brought me out here when I was nine years old for three or four months in the winter. Well, evidently it seemed to help me. She made the mistake of taking me to the Tucson Rodeo and I got infected with the worst disease, <laughs> the rodeo virus. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool watching those guys at the rodeo and and uh, and it looked cool roping, you know. So when I got home after the rodeo a day or so, there was a western store out there near where we were living. We were actually just renting a room with some a family of some friends of ours from back east. And uh, so I went over there to this western store and I went in there and I, I said, I want to buy a rope. Well, back in those days, they just cut you off 30 foot of rope and handed it to you. <laughs> what, how, what, do I, what do I do with this? It's, this isn't the way the guy says, well, you got to tie a hondo in it and put the knots in it. And I said, I don't know how to do that. And he, luckily, he was an old kind of cowboy. He said, I'll fix it up for you. So he, tied this rope up and I w it showed me actually, he showed me how to hold it and how to swing it. Otherwise I might've started holding it at the hand 
Hondo, you know, I just watched him at the rodeo. I, so I went home and I started roping stuff. <laughs> My mom and dad were both very involved with rodeo. Uh, my mom's been to the finals three times, and my dad went to the very first NFR from calf roping. Growing up, my mom and I, we always, we rode together. That's what we did, and we'd compete together. We'd go to jackpots. Um, we'd enter some rodeos together. Then when we started getting colts, and, and she would help me ride colts, I, I miss that, that you know she can ride with me and because she's such a good hand and she does things with horses that you don't even know that's happening and, and can get them to do things. And um, she was a really quiet rider. Um, and I, uh, you know, I miss, miss being able to ride with her. She is 83 years old and the other day she came down and she was mad at me because I wouldn't let her on. <laughs> One of my colts and I was like, I, I don't feel, you know, that confident enough that they're going to be gentle for you. But um, she was very competitive, and so was my dad. My dad's still very competitive um, at 84, and I feel like that's where I get that competitive drive. And you know, you want to, everybody wants to win, but you want to work and, and try to be the best that you can. And you know, growing up, if I didn't ride my horses or practice, then I didn't get to go to the rodeos. Um, that was just the way it is. So, you know, I had to put put in the time and, and work at it. I did six events. In the winter time when it would get dark early, um, I'd play basketball. And so as soon as I was done playing basketball, um, I would try to practice at least one event a night, whether it be roping or um, goat tying or you know riding my horses. So uh, they definitely helped me a lot. I would not have been able to be in the extracurricular activities that I was without my parents, but it's still, they didn't hand it to me. I, I had to, to get out there and actually practice. Plays out. Here comes Sherry Serby. She's a little more, bit more like a surgeon. Boy, always in the right spot. And what an amazing horse. Yeah, she rides so good. I mean, look at, she gets him around the second. All right, here's the third barrel. She's got him stepped by just enough. She's spun out just a little coming off of her. We're going to see a lead change. Since Stingray was four years old, this has been her stall. This stall is kind of the center of all the activity that goes on here. And normally there is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, she likes to be able to look out and, and see. Sometimes horses will get tied right there and she goes and visits and um, you know, she just is, this has been her stall. And uh, in the summertime, Sometimes they'll put some horses in here, but everybody knows when Stingray's headed back, we move the horses and, and this, is, this is her pin. Two-time champion of the world out of Marana, Arizona. That's the next lady getting ready, Sherry Servey. Remember, they can go to the left or right barrel first, either one. De Niro takes off to the left, the next two to the right. Do you remember when um, when Dad bought De Niro at the sale? Mm -hmm. And what were you thinking when he... When he I um, thought he was crazy. <laughs> How come? Because he paid a lot of money for him. <laughs> It panned out. He was a full brother. He is a full brother to Bozo, and he knew what Bozo, probably the best barrel horse ever, and so he thought he had a money bag, and I guess he did. <laughs> I thought Bozo, in my opinion of all the barrel horses I'd seen, I thought he was probably one of the very best, had to be one of the five best I'd ever seen. Bozo was 
was a hell of a horse. He, he, he was outstanding, and that's why I bought De Niro. And because he had driftwood in him through Sunfrost. There's so much speed in his, his pedigree that there in 10% of the, 5% of the people in the world know how much speed is in his background. I mean, it's amazing. All of it come right out of Arizona here. So I, I knew it firsthand. I mean, most of the horses that are in his pedigree were on a big, fancy, wonderful race quarter horse place that was right across the fence from me. Art Pollard had lightning bar and had spotted bull and, and 10 world champion running mares. My nickname for De Niro was Nero. I'd always call him, hey Nero. Good boy, he's a good boy, I know, he's a good boy. The one bad thing about studs is they, they prove themselves sometimes later in life and De Niro's 24 years old. It's, it's crazy time flies, but you know, is is now getting, you know, I feel like pretty popular, and, and his colts have done well. But uh, you know, we hope he's around for 24 more years. But you you never know, and so that that is the kind of the bad part about studs sometimes is that they aren't recognized or uh, what they you know can do until later in life. I got Stingray and knowing, you know, how kind of learning how to take care of horses through the years, I never cut corners. I can only think of one time that she stood at the trailer. I drove all night and it was going to be maybe she stood at the trailer for two hours. Besides that, I would make her a hot wire fence pin or a take panels down or go find a pin for her. I always made sure I'd drive hours out of the way just to go stay somewhere you know nice or safe or where I knew that she would rest good and I probably got less sleep for it but she was happy and that was important to me and I always put shavings down and even if it was not going to be for very long I put the shavings down and you know that ten dollars laying on the ground that was only going to be used for two hours it still was it was important to her so I was going to do it for her and um you know I just I think those those little things like you you take care of of your equine athletes and your horse doesn't have to be running at, you know at Calgary or Cheyenne for you to take care of them they're they they're important to you and so you you go the extra mile what you can do for that horse um I think will help the longevity of your horse and, and that's the key to rodeoing is keeping your horse sound and uh, I think one of the most important things you can do for your horse is take the best care you can for them so that they will last I mean you can take the best care of them and they still something might happen but you still you try you go above and beyond Days, Stingray's daily routine's a little bit different. She gets uh, put on the walker at a walk for 30 minutes, 15 minutes each direction, and just to kind of keep her her shape and her figure. And she gets cookies, and we groom on her and brush on her, and she just kind of gets to chill and um, until she's probably going to go back to uh, the the recip place, the, the breeders, and uh, they take a really good care of her. And then she gets to go to Wisconsin and chill out because it's a lot cooler and she doesn't want to be too hot. So and she just chills. And usually it's, it's her and her, her little sister Marina 
who uh, got hurt, so I can't run her anymore. And they are like best friends. Marina has a, a real sweet personality too. And so they, they live together in Wisconsin. Oh, we love this, don't we? Arson uh, loves Stingray. He's, uh, catch wait, he's always checking to make sure she doesn't go too far. When he thinks that we're gonna take our pin away from her, away from him, then he gets worried, but he's always had a little crush on her. I think one of the, one of the coolest things that I I really enjoy about spending so much time with my horses is getting to know their personalities because they're all different. Some of them, you know, aren't going to have as much personality as the next, but they still, you know, are kind of unique in their own way and um I just, I feel like the more time you spend with them, I think you develop a, like a relationship with them. Troubles and I just had an understanding. Okay, you run barrels, I'll, I'll try not to mess with you very much and leave you alone and he was happy. Hawk was your friend. He, he wanted to please and you know, he was my buddy. So I, I, you know, would spend a lot of time with him. And Stingray, it's just like, I, I knew what she was thinking before she ever did anything. She'd get a look in her eye and you were like, okay, Here's the wreck, it's coming. Or, you know, she was, when she was unhappy about something. And I mean, she was, she's one of those horses that she's got a lot of personality and she lets you know when she's unhappy about something or, you know, when she's, she's happy and she's calm. And that I like to do on my horses. It doesn't matter how far along they are in the barrel pattern, if they're a three-year-old or an open horse. I do this drill to help them keep their feet moving in a small circle. I do some figure eights, um, and even when I'm warming up at a jackpot, I will get off in a corner and do these figure eights. I feel that keeping your horse's feet moving all the way around the barrel helps keep the momentum. It helps from that hesitation sometimes that you have on the back side of the barrel when they want to kind of elevate their head and they stop moving their feet or they take a step out. If you can really work on keeping your horse's feet moving all the way around the barrel and not get maybe a halfway or three quarters around the barrel, but you, you stay driving, it'll keep their hind end up underneath them uh, to where they stay up underneath themselves and they will drive with their front end. Kind of doesn't even, doesn't matter the style, you just bring them down and do it at a walk and a trot. So this is Stewie, he's an open horse. He should know this drill really well, like the back of his hand. And I get, and I stay, I try to stay on the same path in the tracks and see how when I asked him to cross over he kept moving forward he picked his shoulder up just a little bit inside rein inside foot like I'm going around the barrel and I think about getting my horse's front feet all the way all the way around it drive drive I squeeze with my calves I pick him up drive him I don't want him to go away from the barrel I want him to go up up, up and around it so I'm driving squeeze squeeze pick him up and and so I'll bring him into a trot the faster you go and the smaller your circles, you'll find your holes. So right here, I just want him to, to keep moving. And I'm gonna use my outside foot to hold him in to where he doesn't take a step out. And I want him to drive up it. And I'm kind of imagining that there's a barrel here that I'm going around. And like I said, I'll get him off in a corner at a jackpot and just, I, I feel like it, it helps kind of just keep him in check of, Hey, it doesn't matter that we're not in the practice pin. I still want your feet moving in a tight circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring him into a lope. And this is a little bit more difficult, just switching leads, but I'm gonna drive him all the way around, all the way around. Okay, help him. I hear drive all the way, all the way, all the way. <clears throat> and for me, I, I look where I want to go. In the heat of the moment and in the run, I honestly can't tell you where I look, but when I'm going slow and working my horses, I look all the way around because if this is my barrel, 
and I think about, and I just get my horse's feet here, and I start thinking about going to the next barrel, his feet will stop moving, and he'll, I'll lose his butt. He'll maybe, you know, step out or um, won't keep that hind end up underneath him. So if I think about, I need to get one more step around, and I look, and I drive with my legs and my hands to that spot, that keeps that forward motion. And at the end of the day, we gotta keep forward motion to, you know, whoever crosses the line at the fastest wins, but forward motion to where there's no hesitation on the backside. I'm gonna take it, that this drill, and I won't necessarily do the figure eights around the barrel, but I'll take this same circle and the concept to the barrel now and, and show you exactly what I'm talking about, getting all the way around the barrel. So I'm gonna go in here like I was running. I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna squeeze with my legs. I'm driving, driving, driving all the way around it. All the way around it. All the way, all the way. Come and leave. <clears throat> Stewie, sometimes he's super light in the mouth. So I could get him jacked around. You know, I don't want his nose too much. I just wanna see the corner of his eye. I'm gonna squeeze. I'm looking, my front feet are going all the way around, all the way around, all the way, all the way, ready to go and, and leave. And it, if you break it down into a walk and a trot, sometimes when I'm fighting my head and I'm going fast, I, I come back and I never get my horse out of a walk or a trot for that day. I just work on going back to the foundation and where my horse's feet are, are going and where they're being placed. And then I'm gonna be like, okay, it feels good at a walk and a trot. And then I go and I'll, I'll make a little run on them. And I use the same, same thought process, thinking about all the way around the barrel. I hope it helps you. it is hard when somebody walks up to me and is like, well, how'd you do? Still today, I'll be like, you know, is it okay? Or did good or, you know, whatever. But I, I, I kind of get uncomfortable wanting to elaborate. And, and so it, that's just how I've, I've been. It, if I win first or I hit a barrel, I did okay. It's okay. It's basically my answer uh, for several years, and you know I, I do. I think it started probably when I was junior high, really. Um, and I just I always told myself that the people that need to know how I did already know. Basically, I was my parents, <laughs> so I, I I didn't really want to elaborate. And I, I, I am so grateful for what I won, and, and I don't want that to sound like I, I didn't appreciate what I won then, what I've won you know, in, the, in the rodeo world. And um, in 2013, the emotions, and it was like my whole life, I've kept my emotions and what I've won inside, and I really, truly, it was like, I'm not holding back. Uh, this is when I won the world, won the average, and won the Top Gun truck. I really wanted to, all those years of holding everything in and, and just being real reserve, I kind of wanted to let it out and uh, just start jumping up and down, maybe just like run a lap or something, then Thomas and Mac, I don't know, but that was, it, you know, there was a lot of excitement built up and it was a good year. We bred this golden arrow to this three quarter sister to Hawk and uh, got this little mare, Stingray, meet her my hay. But anyway, she started doing well. Poor Todd broke her uh, and, uh, you know, out on a ranch. And she, we treated her just like nothing. <laughs> and she was just another one of our colts, but uh, when, when they started running barrels on her, she really took to it. I would say at the finals, I'd have to go back and look, but I'll bet she won a million dollars at the national finals. I thought my husband was crazy getting all these horses and then all these mares and studs and stuff. And you know, I liked it when we just had a few geldings that you could ride and run barrels on and then he kept getting deeper and deeper and getting more mares and buying more mares because they're breeding. He got a lot of Leia patch mares, that, and Leia patch is how Troubles was bred. So he bought a lot of those mares bred like him, and then bred them to Denaro and stuff. And they have been outstanding mares. Their, their colts have been outstanding. And of course, the pe person on them has a lot to do with that. 
There's a horse voted with the most heart. That's Hawk and Sherry Survey. I feel like I get to talk a lot about Stingray and uh, her and I's history together, and I don't really get to talk about Hawk very much. And the lady that I bought him from named him Hawk because she bought him from a guy named Russell Hawks. So that's where he got his name, and I think it's bad luck to change horse's name, so Hawk stayed. Uh, when I got him, his bridal path was pretty long. Um, you know, for me, I didn't really like it, and I started letting it grow out. And you know, I was young and kind of thought it was cool how it was standing up like a mohawk. So for the rest of his career, I kept it trimmed about uh, three inches and made it stand up. Um, and I would stick a feather in his mane. You can't really see it, no, but I'd stick it in his mane when I competed uh, every run. I'd put a, a feather in him because I like feathers and I thought it was cool. Uh, this is <clears throat> Hawk's bit and tie down that I used on him almost every run of his and I's career together. And this is the quirt that I used. And um, just so I, I kind of dedicated this to, to Hawk. He, uh, <clears throat> Sue Gerard is who I bought him from, and they ranched on him. They live in Wyoming and they would rope and um, go chase sheep and just do kind of everything on him. And he uh, was a really well-mannered horse and barrel racing was, was just another day or another job to him because uh, he had done so many different um, jobs. So he was, he was a pretty special horse to me. And I, honestly, he, when I first got him, for about the first year, I would either get a note time or he would win first. It was, we were real inconsistent, and he was definitely my backup horse to Troubles, and um, fought my head to get with him, and finally, about a year into it, I figured out I needed to be a little bit more consistent and uh, leave him alone, and he, he and I started clicking, and it, it was a blast. It was like riding a four-wheeler around the barrels. As you can see, I like feathers, and I have kept all of the feathers that I used through Hawk's career in his mane. Um, they've, they've seen a few miles, and I, uh, these other ones are just random feathers that some of them came from my friends that are uh, Navajo, and some of them just, you know, people know that I like feathers, and so I will occasionally walk through here and just kind of check out my feathers and think about sticking these in, in Hawk's mane. I would um, take it and I'd put a rubber band on this. This actually is an old rubber band, that's how old it is, and I'd put it right at the edge of his little bridal path mohawk and um, just wrap it around there and it would kind of flop around. It would be a little bit shorter than that, but anyways, that's how it went. This is my four-year-old, Money May. She is um, probably about a year into doing the same drill that I just did on Stewie. She sometimes struggles with keeping that same distance and in, in that circle smooth. Um, she loses focus sometimes. I try not to make a big deal about it if she's looking at the butterflies that are flying around and work on just her feet and don't make a big deal about it. Just really concentrate on where her feet are going in the same thing. Keep, keep forward motion. Um, sometimes, you know, when I say you squeeze with your legs, some horses are more responsive than others. And so if you just barely squeeze, you're gonna speed them up. So you have to judge, just maybe just not, don't squeeze them as much. So right here, okay, I'm gonna get my, my figure eight, but she wanna take a step out just a little bit but she's staying moving for motion. It's good. Maybe wanted to drop in just a little bit right there. I'd like her to stay kind of up forward moving a little bit better, but not bad. And I watch where I'm going, my tracks. I try to stay in the same tracks. 
Am I getting all the way around the barrel? All the way around the barrel. Well, if you do that, you worry about getting the front end, that hind end's gonna drive up underneath them and she's gonna be able to plant that hind leg and really drive out of the barrel and not lose forward mo momentum. Doing pretty good, actually. So I will go to the barrel and do the same thing, uh, same concept. Sometimes when you go to the barrel, don't get too big of a circle like out here. Um, the bigger the circle, the easier it is to keep their feet moving, but then they don't plant that hind leg as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her in here. Like if I was gonna trot my pattern, okay, see how she's, getting a little sticky so I'm a squeezer right there I want her to go all the way around it I want her to get up here get up here around perfect now she's obviously greener than Stewie and she didn't maybe leave and get, get her hind in over as soon as I would have liked but I'm not gonna worry about that right now because she is going around and staying that forward motion that I'm asking her to so not going to worry about that today. Also, when you're doing this drill, sometimes when you're in a trot and you're on a young horse, it's easy to do go around it two-handed. And I always ask the people that are riding, or I'm trying to help, are you going to go around the barrel with one hand or two hands when you go fast? If they tell me they're going to go around the barrel one-handed, then you start walking and trotting around the barrel one-handed because your colts get to where they rely on that outside rein to guide them around the barrel. Well, when you put the speed to them, you want them to know that spot and where to go to one-handed, and you're going to use your outside leg to guide them and to hold them in to where normally your outside rein would have held them in. Your leg is doing that. Your legs may be sore for a little bit after doing that, but stay hooked because it's easier to get them to go faster and know what you want when you go ahead and add the speed. If you are gonna run them one-handed, ride them one-handed. I ran Stingray the, in the spring of 07 at a fraternity here in Arizona, and uh, I, I knew she she had something special, you know, competition-wise. She, her little feet were going really fast, and um, I think I, I won the round or, or did did well on her. And uh, so my mindset at that time was, don't pressure. And that's why I let Ryan take her. Just hey, go to some jackpots, slowly season her. Um, I'm gonna go off and, and rodeo, and you know, take your time with my horse. She's never had anything that, you know, could chance career ending, you know, maybe just needed to, to rest for, you know, a few weeks or something, but been very, very lucky. I ran her at Calgary when she was 15 and won the round on her. And, you know, I, I f feel fortunate and, you know, really proud that I kept a rodeo horse sound for that long because, you know, as bar racers we know, keeping a horse sound is, is a huge feat. And so she, she's just been tough and, and gritty and she's taken care of herself when she needed to on background. And, you know, I feel like I've tried to take the best care I can of her. And um, she's had a, a really long career in, in the rodeo world. I got talked into this, but <laughs> it's a great idea. And, um, I just, Stingray loves kids, and um, she needs to be in a picture as much as I do. So, uh, you thought you were going to Stingray. <laughs> so this is pretty exciting. This horse is pretty special to me and my feet. So, so we had our youth race in 2018, it was in Marana, and um, my friends were like, hey, it'd be so cool if, if Stingray would make a little appearance in the, the grand entry. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't think kids would even, you know, do anything. I just, I, but they talked me into it. And so, because it's two miles down the road, we took her. And <clears throat> I remember um, 
I had my back to the gate, and when she walked into the gate, we were talking about, uh, the announcer said, we have a special guest. And the reaction of the kids that were over here, I, I knew what was happening, and she was coming in the gate, and I remember it was a really cool moment because the reaction of these little kids when that mayor walked in the gate is, I don't even care if anybody ever knows or remembers who. <clears throat> I am, but the fact that they remember who Stingray is, is really important because she's very special and I remember thinking, you can't lose it here, you cannot lose it, we gotta get through this grand entry and I just wanted every little kid to be able to touch her and um, be able to enjoy that moment and so it was, it was just a really cool thing because I never knew that those kids would react like that to having Stingray walk through the arena. And um, it, was, it was pretty awesome. Holding that horse. So once again, Sherry Sturdy and Stingray, thank you guys so much for all you do for our industry. We definitely appreciate every bit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, on our way to three titles, Sherry Survey, two-time champion of the world, Miranda, Arizona. It was about seven years ago, started, you know, kind of maybe thinking about trying to get an embryo out of Stingray or, you know, slowly doing that. I hadn't ever really put any thought into that because I was too busy competing on her. And you hear so many pros and cons about trying to do it while you're competing on a mare and really was fought with what I should do. And Jason Martin and Charlie Cole called me about buying an embryo. And I was like, yeah. I'll sell you an embryo and I'll get one too. So I thought it was gonna be that easy. And uh, she didn't take the to the first stud that we tried for me. And I was entered at Guyman, Oklahoma, gonna be in May, and so it was in April. And I, um, a really good friend of mine, David James, had her, and um, they were doing the embryo stuff for me, and I just said, just get Jason and Charlie their embryo, I want my horse back. And of course she takes <laughs> for them, and uh, they get their embryo, I take Stingray, the next week I win Guyman on her. So Jason and Charlie had Phyllis Sting, he was born, um, they have kept me, I feel like they've kept me part of, of that horse's, you know, life and I'm still a family because all through his, um, you know, breaking and every like stage of that horse's life, they've sent me pictures and videos and knew that they were going to send into Ryan Padone to ride and I thought it was a great idea and, um, feel like that's kind of halfway my child too because you know they they've let me be a part of that horse's life the next year i um did the same thing had her stay at you know somebody's house um got her closer i was going to try for a different stud so i was going to try to keep her um closer to where that stud was and um hauled her in and out i had one shot i was gonna let him try one time because i didn't want her to have be pumped full of the hormones and all the stuff that you normally do to get embryos out of a mare and i was learning that apparently steam ray is going to be a little bit more difficult and she's not going to give her eggs up as as easy as some mares so they tried one time she didn't take i said i'm done bring her back got back on her and rodeo on her. Um, so, it, you know, I, I, I don't know if that was the right thing to do or not, but I was rodeo and that was my living and, and making the finals and um, skipped to the next year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try, try again. And I kept her here in Marana and we um, bred her, our vet here, Bonnie Twaits, um, bred her and she, so we breed her. I'm gonna go to the Dodge Circuit Finals in Guthrie, drive there, hoping that she's bred. Um, I compete, I did well on her. The next day I went to David's, we flushed her, got an embryo out of, uh, out of her and I loaded up and, and brought her home and I was thankful. And 
That embryo is Money Me. All I really prayed for was a filly. I, I really wanted a filly um, out of Stingray. So when Money May was born, it comes out a little filly, and then she looks like Stingray. It was crazy. Um, has Stingray's a, a weird color. Um, she's obviously registered Palomino, but there were times when she looked chocolate Palomino. She was a real dark Palomino, and she's got these dark spots, and it almost looks like she's muddy in, in places. Uh, they're, they're super dark, and she kind of changes with the seasons. Um, she'll get lighter sometimes, but then darker. And Money May uh, looks just like her. She has the silver mane and tail, just like Stingray, and Stingray's got a real dark spot on her, kind of her, her hip and her, her belly, and Money May has the same exact dark spot on her. It, it's crazy, and um, she really is a, a mini me. And you know, I know there are going to be some double takes when I show up in public with Money May because you're going to think that, that it is Stingray, but she's going to be a little bit bigger. Money May is the first Dash to Fame that I've rode from ground zero. That I've rode some Dash to Fames that you know I got on them when they were nine, ten years old, and so this has been an experience. Um, she's you know just a little bit different than you know riding a, a dinero, and so learning uh, her quirkiness. She she doesn't really spook at anything. I mean she'll look and, and stuff and kind of normal cult things and. Um, she she likes her friends, or, you know, to be tied around, but she can be tied off by herself, um, and she just she I don't know, she's so much more cockier than Stingray ever thought about being. <laughs> um, I don't ever think Stingray was a cocky kind of horse, and I feel like Money May is. I think she'd be one of those um, girls in school that just was beautiful and and knew it and um, strutted her stuff around. <laughs>Last time I ran Stingray was at uh, Pueblo, Colorado in 2017. And I I knew warming her up, I just had this feeling like, you know, in the years past, you know it's coming, but I just had this feeling that this probably would be the last time I run her. Um, she was sound, she felt amazing warming up, and um, she worked good, and I think I, I placed on her. Um, but I just, I knew that it, you know, the, that chapter of her life was, was getting close to coming to an end. And so I never did officially say, yes, you know, Stingray's retired, but I haven't run her in a year and a half. And so, you know, I mean, it is for a reason. And she, she's happy. She's, um, doesn't owe me anything. And I, I didn't want to keep running her just to to run her because she doesn't deserve that she she deserves shavings in her pen and um cookies and getting petted on and when people come by and they're like is that stingray they want to go get their picture taken with her is is what she deserves and so uh you know i i wanted her to end her career you know and not be like sad or, or anything because it, it isn't sad it's it's been a, a great career and um I, I'm very, very grateful for what she's done for me and in our family. I, I mean, it, the, it really is um, immeasurable what, what she has done for our, our family. And um, she, you know, helped put De Niro on the barrel racing block as, as far as a producing uh, barrel sire. And she... Um, took me places and I was able to compete at places that you know I might not would have been if I hadn't won what I, I had won and um, I got to meet little kids that just want to go get their picture taken with Stingray and so um, it you know I'm I'm sad that I can't make that one more run on her but I'm happy that she has ended her career a long career sound she still loves her job and she is, is happy. And so it's, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's part of life. And um, when I think about it, I would rather have, have her in my life and what I've won than, than not, in, you know, not been able to, to accomplish the things that, that I have. But I, I am fully aware 
that I would not have accomplished the last 10 years of my bar racing career without that mare. And um, letting the bar racing world see how special she is, is um, you know, it's all part of it. And um, I'm very thankful for what she's done for me. People have asked me what the next chapter of my life is. I still feel like that little girl on her sick horse who loves her horses and loves to run barrels. I never thought my sick horse journey would bring me to standing here today. No matter how tough life is, there is nothing you can't overcome or achieve if you always strive to do your best. And it never hurts to be on the back of a good horse. Thank you for this tremendous honor.